Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today we're taking a look at a budget RGB air cooler. This is the Vitrue V5, and this is the black variant, which I think looks pretty good, but we're gonna take a look at it right after a word from today's video sponsor. And actually that word is from me. This is the coldest water and it's cold water. It's exactly what it sounds like. This water bottle is fantastic. It's durable, has a nice texture on it, has some rubber grippy points, so it's never gonna just fly out of your hands. And most importantly with a water bottle like this, it keeps your water cold for a very long time. Yep, still cold. So if you're interested in one that looks exactly like this, or maybe a different size, or maybe a different color, well, see those links in the description down below. There's a running giveaway that they're just constantly cycling through this giveaway. There's also a discount code down there in case you decide to pick up one of these fantastic water bottles. Again, links in the description down below. Let's hop over to looking at this CPU cooler now. So like I said in the intro of this video, this is a budget CPU cooler. It's a typical air cooler. It's a 120 millimeter fan on a single tower. And when I actually looked at this uh, CPU cooler the first time, it looked very similar to me. Specifically, the heatsink itself looked extremely similar in shape to another budget cooler that is just legendary across the world. And that's actually the Snowman cooler. This cooler actually looks almost identical to the snowman, at least as far as the tower itself goes. The big difference though is the Vitro cooler here has five copper heat pipes as opposed to the four that the snowman carries. Now, before we look at performance, a few other notes. Obviously, this is an RGB fan. In fact, it's an ARGB fan. It does have a uh, cable on it that plugs directly into your motherboard's three pin five volt ARGB header. So if you have a modern motherboard that has one of those five volt RGB headers on it, then this fan connects directly into that and you can use your motherboard's probably terrible software to control that ARGB fan, which in this case, I'm using Gigabyte software to just cycle it through the color so you can kind of see a little bit how it looks. Obviously, the camera's never gonna really do this fan justice with how it looks. In fact, it actually looks quite good, the RGB that is, but the software that Gigabyte has is terrible and frankly, most motherboard software is terrible. The one upside of this implementation of RGB is you don't have to worry about remote controls. Uh, you don't have to worry about fan hubs that you have to mount somewhere in your case. This plugs directly into your motherboard, so it's good to go and will actually work perfectly with all of the other RGB components that may be synced up with your motherboard software. Now, a few of the other specs to go through off of the box here. The fan is, like I said, a 120 millimeter fan. The fan speed runs anywhere from 800 to 1700 RPM, though it's not the quietest of all fans. I don't really have a good way of giving you that reference other than to say currently this thing is running a stress test as I actually uh, videotape this videotape. We're not videotaping anything. It's 2021. So as I record this rather, uh, this is running at about as fast as it's going to run. So if the fan is obnoxious to you in this video, I blame it on the stress test. Uh, the airflow is 21 to 52 CFM. The bearing type is a hydraulic bearing and this thing does weigh in at 761 grams. Socket compatibility is pretty much everything on the mainstream market, whether we're talking AM4, AM3, FM2, if you're going back that far on AMD side, and then all of the recent LGA sockets, 1200, 1150, 1151, 1155, 1156, 1366, this thing basically covers anything mainstream that's either current or in the even reasonable past. And as far as actually connecting to the motherboard for the actual fan speed, we have a four pin PWM fan connector, just like pretty much every other tower cooler out there. So mounting this thing was actually pretty much dead simple. In the box, it came with virtually everything you would expect from a CPU tower cooler. It came with a little tube of thermal paste, which I am using right now with testing this CPU cooler. The mounting brackets are super simple. It does come with a back plate if you're using an Intel socket, but if you're using an AMD socket, it's just going to use the back plate that came with your motherboard. It's gonna get rid of the uh, clip retention mechanism that some of the older stock coolers from AMD used to use, and it's gonna make use of that back plate with just four screws with a spring to keep them properly tensioned. Very easy to install, 
provided that the motherboard is flat. If you're already having the motherboard installed in the case when you go to install the cooler itself, you're gonna have to find a way of holding the back plate still while you get this cooler started. And that's my one complaint is most AMD back plates and the Intel one included with this cooler don't necessarily just stay perfectly put where you want them to as you try to attach a cooler itself. So you will wanna find a way of making sure that back plate's not gonna move around or just pop off completely while you're trying to install this cooler. That's really my only complaint though with the installation method because otherwise it's dead simple. And finally that brings us to performance and I mentioned this was running a stress test and has been now for 15 minutes using IDA64 CPU and FPU stress test and right now I'm looking at a temperature of 69 degrees on a Ryzen 5600X. So the 5600X is well under control with this cooler that cost me just $25 on Amazon. Now I did grab this on a sale so it is likely that this uh, pricing has fluctuated since I purchased it so check the link in the description down below for current pricing and availability but it should come in roughly around the same pricing as something like a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo or even a little bit more expensive than something like the AliExpress Snowman and probably a little bit more expensive than something like the Deepcool Gamax 400 which is a another budget cooler that's readily available that is really good value for the most part. Now, all of those coolers either feature no lighting at all or a static color like the Gamax 400 you can get in like blue or red or no color at all. Whereas this thing has full lighting control and I think that's where this thing is really punching above its weight class, not just with the five copper heat pipes, but also with the fact that it just has lighting that you can adjust to match whatever you want in your system. If you have a red theme system, boom, this thing is red. If you have a blue theme system, it's gonna be blue. It's gonna be whatever you want it to be. And if you want a unicorn vomit system, this thing actually has you covered with the RGB element. And the fan is, while not as quiet as some fans out there, it's fine and it does the job and it looks great while it's doing it at a price that frankly i don't think i've ever seen anything beat this thing on overall value so if i was somebody looking into a budget cpu cooler that looked great in my system and i just needed it to not be obnoxious then yeah this thing actually has you covered and as far as budget kings go it's got to be in the discussion, at least in the United States right now, with it coming in. Like I said, that $25 to $30 price is where I think this makes a ton of sense. Much more than that, and you're going to run into some just overall better tower coolers in general from like Arctic or even uh, Cooler Master. And if you go a little bit further even still, you might start running to some scythe coolers and that sort of thing. But at that $30-ish, yeah, this thing makes a ton of sense. So if you find it at that price you may want to go ahead and pick it up if you're in the market for a budget CPU cooler. So that basically wraps it up for me, but I do want to hear from you guys. What do you think about a cooler like this that has a quite enough fan? It's ARGB, it's blacked out, so it looks great in virtually any case environment, and it's overall pretty cheap. Let me know what you think. Is this something that you would consider picking up for your next build, or possibly have you even already picked it up for your current build? Let us know down below. And of course, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.